Hey folks, Pat Deegan here. Today I want to talk a little bit about diagnoses. Um, when we give people a diagnosis, it is much more than a medical event. It is a label um, that will follow us through uh, the rest of our lives. And so I often encourage clinicians to make sure that uh, we are very conservative when diagnosing people. For instance, I am very wary of giving a diagnosis of schizophrenia, say, to a, a young person experiencing early psychosis who also has a history of marijuana use and who also has um, a history of sexual trauma. I mean, we just don't really know. An accurate diagnosis in that kind of situation is very difficult. And the reason I'm saying we need to be sensitive is that the diagnosis, and I know this personally because I was diagnosed with schizophrenia at 17, that diagnosis follows us through the rest of our lives and has some very unpleasant consequences. So for instance, I'll never forget um, uh, going through the classes and everything, my partner and I, to adopt a child here in Massachusetts. And I was almost denied, uh, even though I passed all the courses, uh, we were almost denied the opportunity to adopt because of that diagnosis of schizophrenia. And luckily, I knew my rights under the Americans with Disabilities Act. But simple things like flying into Australia and on the customs form, it asks, have you ever had a serious mental illness? As you grow older, you know, when in a dating relationship do you, uh, you know, share with somebody, uh, you know, a diagnosis uh, that is highly stigmatized like psychosis or schizophrenia? Um, uh, it, there are just a lot of consequences. We can be barred from um, enrolling in the military, barred from um, acting in uh, civil service jobs like police and fire, etc., because of these diagnoses. So clinicians, please, when we're working with people, particularly young people, let's be really conservative in our diagnoses um, and realize that things change over time and often we get it wrong. Have a great day.